Guys, before, let me cut you off, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> how about this? How about you cut it? We're done with the episode. And then how about we all get a drink and we chat for like 30 minutes? Just film, dude. I'm with yeah, it. man. Let's do it. Let's do it. You heard it. You heard it here. Now you know what we're doing after this podcast, man. There you go. Welcome back to the Towercast podcast, the Towering podcast for the Towering filmmaker of El Paso and the world. Uh, we're excited. Today's is a very special episode. Um, before we get into the special guest for this episode, I want to introduce uh, my lovely panel that I have right here. Yours truly, Carlos de la Torre, your writer-director perspective here. Uh, Michael de la O, Hello, our cinematographer yeah. here. John Eric Castro, that acting perspective right there. What's going on, film people? And we have Austin Young making sure we're sounding lovely in the background down there. Yo. Yo. <laughs> and also producer and editor perspective. He'll, he'll chime in. Um, I want to introduce our guest for today. Ooh. It's a very special episode today. We have Alejandro Montoya Marin. Um, awesome filmmaker, man. I mean, he's he's done an awesome library of work, which we're going to get into. Uh, you may know him from the El Rey Network's Rebel Without a Crew, uh, where he did an amazing challenge of a $7,000 feature film and in partnership with Robert Rodriguez to a certain extent, which is very exciting. He's a hero of ours. You guys have heard me at least obsess about him um, on this, on this podcast. And, uh, and t you know, every time I say this all the time, but every time I direct a feature film, I have to read rebel without a crew. I have to, I have to read it just to, just to get back into that mentality a little bit. Um, but he, not only has he done that, but a substantial, body of work uh, as a feature filmmaker, music videos, commercials. I mean, everything that a film director wants to do in, in the industry, the, the man has done it. So Alejandro, thank you so much for being on the podcast, brother. We're, we're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Nice to really nice to meet you finally in person. Or, yeah, yeah. You, you've done music videos? I have. Yes, I've done several. I, I, I always say that if if I can make a living doing anything, if I can make a living doing music videos, I think I'd be the happiest man ever. Why is that? Is it because it's only three, four minutes you got to worry about or? I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think it's because I, I, I love the combination of, of celluloid with, with music. Okay. Sure. Like, sure. I think you could do a lot of like, not only just interpretive like music videos, but you could do like plot videos. You could do yeah. performance, mm. art pieces. Like, I don't know. I think it's just, Hey you know, man, nineties of like big budgets music videos are gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, Alejandro, thank you again for being on, man. You know, we we talk oh. about talk talking to filmmakers and talking to indie filmmakers, um, and I think you are the definition of that, man. And it's it's refreshing to talk to somebody who um, grew up in Mexico, and um, not only that, but is doing work in New Mexico, in Texas in california and and various other places that you're kind of going back and forth on um i like to kick off the the podcast kind of just with little anecdotes and uh, you know the way you and i met at least is we just became facebook friends yeah. and i'm not quite sure yeah, how you're socializing now. yeah, yeah. I, i'm not quite sure how we became facebook friends i don't know probably a year ago at this point and i you know we just would randomly comment on each other's posts because it's about film you know or about a certain review of a film or the new trailer that's popped up and we're just you know constantly commenting on each other's stuff in fact just yesterday was the hero the master of cinema martin scorsese's birthday oh. and i i gotta bring him up because he's my hero man he's my hero but um uh, alejandro posted something about it and, he, and, and we started talking about that you know we started talking about the top scorsese films that we we felt do you, do you really like scorsese that much or is he just you know on your look at the glasses bro of course he does you know oh, that's true <laughs> everyone should like everyone yeah. like, everyone's like Oh, your work reminds me a lot of Edgar Wright. And I go, Scorsese. Oh, yeah, appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you. As much Thank as you. I love Edgar Wright is because, I mean, not, not only, not, and, and I'm not Josh, I mean, the man is one of my favorite directors of Wright, but uh, Scorsese, um, uh, fucking, no, no, not Scorsese, sorry, but uh, who was I just talking about? Edgar Wright or? Edgar what? Wright. Um, there's just so many filmmakers that have been inspired by by by, by Scorsese. Scorsese. Come on, that's what I exactly. So Scorsese is at the top of the list. I it's it's I, like Kubrick. Yeah. It's like everybody feels inspired by him at one point or another, right? Yeah, Kubrick, exactly. Hitchcock, Kurosawa. He's he's like earned that right already. Yeah, 
it's he's, there's just there's like stages like you know like there's a lot of like like my generation and younger is like tarantino's really big but sure I mean, sure yeah yeah of course Daisy was always like 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 i said i became a well i didn't say this but yesterday when we were talking and posting i became yeah. obsessed to them when i went to a video store and when i just i i, I saw all the new ones already and i was like eh, i'm gonna you know this is 12 so don't yeah. judge me i didn't know Crazy yeah. was like, <laughs> one or two movies. Please say Hugo, man. Please say Hugo. No, no. Definitely. Okay, okay. Who? The, I mean, which one? I mean, uh, Goodfellas. When I was twelve, it was Goodfellas, and, and sure. I didn't know who Scorsese was when I heard right. of him. But I remember going like, "Oh, but I've heard Robert De Niro is a really good actor." Sure. Yeah, yeah, of course. And shit. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, look, we can get into hours and hours about talking about him. I, these guys, these guys are annoyed at this point because he's my hero. I just want to have I like I, your, your 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 cable guy poster. That's one of the most underrated comedies of all time. There you go. I'm hard to do. Scorsese's. What's Scorsese and De Niro? The the, the comedy king of comedy. King of comedy. Oh, king, king of comedy. comedy. Yeah. There it is. But I, I, I want to get your take on Irishman, man. Hmm. <laughs> I'm in between both. I liked it. I liked it. I, I mean, you can, I mean, people can say, oh, I already saw it. But I mean, even the worst fi Scorsese film is better than the Thank best you. film of other fucking films. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Hands down. <laughs> All right. I got to watch it again. Then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually just pre-ordered the Criterion, so it should be getting here next month, man. I'm excited for that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get Amores Perros on Criterion. I, I, I pre-ordered it too, bro. No, I, no, I, no I, puedo ver esa película. No, no puedo. Uh, <laughs> no, yo sé, pero no puedo ver un perro morirse, güey. Me duele, güey. Pues sí, yo sé, ¿verdad? Pero... Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more of a Cuaron fan. I, I, y tu mamá también es my jam. And I, I got Roma on Criterion because just Cuaron's, again, one of my other heroes, too. But uh, we, we got... to him once, and I was like... To so Cuaron? Yeah, dude. Oh, I shit, how was that? I interviewed... I was fucking... I was freaking out, dude, because <laughs> I went to a show and they gave me this, like, so Netflix gave reviewers this huge, thick definition of what Roma was. And mm. I I grew up in, uh, I lived a lot of the, a lot of summers in Mexico City, but I didn't live in La Colonia Roma, but I know La okay. Colonia Roma. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, li I, I lived in my grandparents' house in Insurgentes. Ah, okay. Mm. You no, know, like 30 minutes, 45 minutes away from, 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 from that Colonia, Colonia sure. So, oh, one of the things that everyone was like raving about the movie is not only the performance of Sydney, but the sound editing for me was oh, yeah. pivotal. Like I, mean, I, I went with a bunch of my friends that are, none of them are Mexican. <laughs> yes. And, and they all loved them because we're all cinephiles or, sure, or, sure, or okay, yeah. So we went to go see it. And I told everyone, guys, I think that like midway, especially when I heard the tri, 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 la basura y el pinche yeah, fino, and all that shit. I was like, it took you there. Wow, this motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> and some people thought, man, that after Bye. children, that after children of men, he had peaked. And I said, no, man, he's just getting started. And mm. and I think that was the next step was for him to DP his own. Because you know, when you lean on Chivo, Chivo will make your fucking film look good, no matter who you are. I don't care who you are, Chivo will make your film look good. Yeah, but him having to depend on his own, you know, on his own uh, intuition about the cinematography, that I I, I think. You're right. The sound design was beautiful, but I think the cinematography yeah. did did something for me. It, yeah. it really put it in the perspective of a portrait for me. And that's what I think the whole mm. film was about, a memory, a portrait in time. Uh, but, you know, I, I told you this, Alejandro, we we have another podcast called the Watchtower podcast where we just do film reviews. We're going to have to have you on that, man, because this is that's what we do is just this yeah. basically. But, but no Scorsese videos, though. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> we got to do this one. There you I'm go. In. There. I'm in. Hey, hey man. We, 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 game. He's game. We all saw Monday. We know that he loves count comedies like the cable guy. We know that's his yes, jam too. Dude. So um, but I'm very for this podcast and for this episode, we're very interested in hearing your hero's journey, Alejandro. How did you get started, man? How yeah, uh, you say I know back. you know I know 12 years old was a big thing for you, and that's when you kind of declared like I'm gonna be a filmmaker. But tell us about that growing up in Mexico and then you know Laredo and all of that. Tell tell us your story, man. It's it's a lot has changed. A lot has changed since the fucking since 2001 or I mean, 2001 is when I turned 18. So going <laughs> back in time. Okay. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I I'm I'm 38 years old. I'm oh no, I, you don't look 38, man. I thought you were uh, like no, yeah. You, you look like a fresh 30 year old. You know what I mean? 
Legit, no. <laughs> what is this shit? What is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I, I just, I'm. It's, 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 it's been a journey, man. And I love yeah. the way that uh, it's. I love the way Mexico's changing because you know more and more productions are are coming out of there. And not only sure. that, but like more and more productions are getting like really really highlighted in like certain like countries and festivals oh, yeah. and big, yeah. big uh, respected institutions. So that just Definitely. makes me happy because when we, when I was a kid, it wasn't available. Like mm -hmm. just yesterday, uh, Sanborns, does everyone know Sanborns? Sanborns? No. Sanborns so, is like a cafe, a chain of cafes in Mexico okay. that when you go eat outside, they have like perfumes and books and movies and CDs and clothes, hmm. a bunch of shit. Kind of like, Jeez, I don't know. Like I, it's I its own thing, right? Do yeah. you know Liverpool? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, so Sanborns is like a restaurant. So I just I every time I go to Mexico, I have to go to Sanborns and have like chilaquiles or enchiladas suizas. Like I just uh -huh. like and and when I was a kid, that you could not find comic books in Mexico. It was a very wow. like maybe newspaper stands and shit like that. And now it's like walls, man. It's, yeah, novels and just a bunch of shit that wasn't available. So I just like that the arts are being appreciated a little bit sure. more in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I mean, they always have, but cine and film have. We just we just interviewed. Project. We just interviewed. It's funny to say that we just interviewed a, a buddy of ours named Canado Limon, very talented filmmaker out of the Juarez area, and he was Quite telling us how because that's that's kind of our our neck of the woods is Juarez, Chihuahua, you know. Um, North, those Norteños, you know. So, uh, this buddy of ours, he had just got, he just got one of his films into Morelia Film Festival, mm. the Oaxaca Film Festival, and he's saying how these film festivals are now pivotal, like completely huge film. Uh, that is really good. Malacara, you know. So, I think that that's that's a key thing in what you're saying, Alejandro. Like the the aspect of cinema and films because they're about pot smokers and. <laughs> And actually, yeah. like, no, for they're like, wait, wait, wait a minute. There's no answer in this film. No, no. <laughs> There's no nudity, straight up. You know, <laughs> sex scene. Uh, no, no, I get you, but but I think that that's kind of. I think it's growing for that reason. I think I, I think the three amigos have a lot to do with it. I think you know Cuaron and, and Niñaritu and Del Toro have definitely brought mainstream cinema and and the mexican filmmaker into into mainstream cinema um and i think you're right people are getting recognized a lot more but i, I do think i i told that you know my my family and i went to um to guanajuato uh last year a couple years back and i i as soon as i went to san miguel de allende man i was like i gotta shoot something here at some point this is <laughs> beautiful to not have on on celluloid um, because it is, it's a beautiful place to shoot and it's a beautiful place where stories really do come alive. And if you're from there and you know, the people there, you're, yeah. the stories are there, man. The stories are there. It's funny. My next movie is going to, is I'm writing a script in Spanish and I want to shoot it in, in Merida, Yucatan. Said uh -huh. too, so. Dude. Have you ever written yeah. a script in Spanish? This is my first one. Quijosu. Yeah. I'm really happy with it, man. I'm, I'm, I feel like five years younger because it's making me come come to all these stories that I was yeah. like just situ not not stories but situations in the script sure. that I was like, Shh, I remember when that shit happened. <laughs> oh, I like those, man! Hell yeah, dude! That's what it's about, man. Cool. So that's is that uh, the the evolution of, of Mexican cinema? Obviously, we've seen throughout time. Um, and if you don't know Mexican cinema, by the way, not just Cuaron del Toro and Niaritu, but beyond that, I mean, you should really do your homework on Mexican cinema, man. There's some beautiful films out there. Uh, one of them, like uh, Como, uh, like Water for Chocolate, is a beautiful, beautiful picture. Um, uh, um, La Vida yeah. Azul. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was I a mean, great movie. Fantastic I film. And, and, La Primera de Cuaron de Solo con tu pareja. Solo con tu pareja. Was, like, yeah, dude. I, fantastic. I was forced to watch that, and I I, I finished laughing my ass off. Hey, <laughs> hey. it's a fantastic that, that's definitely your type of vibe man so look on the it's definitely your type of vibe it is it is that's i can see that it's fantastic picture it is and it was his, his directorial debut too so i mean um talk about talk about amazing uh debuts but yeah man so you we see the evolution of mexican cinema but how does that affect you as a kid how does that affect you in, in wanting to make films you know i think it gave me the trust to tell my dad i'm gonna do it oh like i, I think it, it uh robert i mean 
the thing is that I, even though we talk like I, I, I when I shook Robert's hand, I told him I used to wash my dad's car to pay for your movies on paper. Uh, yeah. It's on the show. I yeah. think. Yeah. 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 I, th- I, I, I think you're I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. We had a I mean, that conversation that's 30 seconds in the show was like 15 minutes. Like, oh, 20, OK. Like we got gotcha. you. We, we spoke wow. like. No, there's a lot of cuts that it's like, oh, they got 30 yeah, seconds. Yeah. No, dude, we got like 30 fucking minutes. Yeah. Oh, James. Cameron is in the building. Oh shit! No way. While yeah. while they were doing Alita, while they were doing yeah. Alita, they were doing all the posts for Alita. No way. Yeah, dude. Crazy. So we were all like, no. And then they threatened. They threatened like, by the way, guys, we don't want to. But Tarantino might come tomorrow. So we oh, were shit. like, no. <laughs> like we were yeah. like, get out of town with that. Shit. <laughs> he he didn't go. Right. Because yeah, yeah. I signed the contract with Sony to do Once Upon a Time. Oh, so okay. I mean, we were like, yeah, okay, we get it. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. It's fine. I'm sorry. It, it was exciting. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. Stuck down your toes. Why? Like, I mean, I feel like for everybody, there's there's like a film that really pushes you. That like filmmaking is what you want to do. And I mean, you seem to be going towards the writing directing route. What well, was there a film that did that for you? That that you just felt like at the end of it. I, I need to make this my life choice. Like I need to just pursue this full time, no matter what. <clears throat> I think it's um. You, have you guys seen Rushmore? Yeah, Rushmore, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wes Anderson. So before Rushmore, oh, the law. That, that was me. Like uh, I, I'm, I, I'm literally writing this shit. I'll send you a screenshot right now where <laughs> the teacher was like, "You're failing all your subjects," uh, and it was because I was more occupied by being the popular kid or the funny kid. Yeah. Uh, and, I and, like, I, and that was guilty. a big thing on the show for you. You said, you know, yeah. one of the pivotal moments in your life was a teacher told you you're not oh, going yeah. to do anything with your life, right? And that's... going to be a oh, taxi yeah. driver. Yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big yeah, deal, man. It's a big deal, especially yeah. because, I mean, I think that there's several types of people, but in a situation where someone wants to follow their dream, there's two types, and it's the procrastinators and the, oh, Yeah. And I remember, I don't fucking remember that day till the day it's I It's a switch. Going. It's a switch. Yeah. It flicks yeah, on, right? Immediately, because it's not like now where it's like, oh, the teacher doesn't say that shit. This is in the fucking 90s in Mexico. They were like, Las Valia, Taxi me dijo, vas a hacer, no vas a hacer nada más que un taxista. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I got my revenge. I got my revenge. Yeah, hey, man. man. Clearly, clearly. No, no I, I actually. You I, said her name. You you were I saying in the show you, that you were gonna go over and like be I like. Did you? I did. Oh, yeah, you did. He that. did. He did. You did go. Yeah, oh I, no way! I did, and I told him like, "Hey, I, uh, this year I, I walked in. He was in class, dude. He was in class. <laughs> and oh. I was I'm like, da, 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 hey, maestro, cómo está? Cómo está? And I told him, like, hey, by the way, I made a hundred grand last year. What the fuck did you do? Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh he remembered me. I was, he was like, Mokoya, el mero cabrón. El mero cabrón. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> it was, uh, the- that's yeah, I mean, man. it's got to be satisfying. It is powerful. It, it, it's one of those moments where if you at least get to do that, then the rest of your life, you can say, you know what, man? That's the highest high, dude. Yeah, you prove it to yourself. You prove it to, to those no, who especially say Especially because you're supposed to be nurturing these kids' fucking dreams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's true. I, I mean, you, you shouldn't just immediately like, oh, I want to be a doctor. You'll never accomplish that. Like, yeah. Uh, Sientas a mocosillo. Yeah, yeah. yeah just because the kid part. smells? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, Rushmore's a, look. The Law was a big Wes Anderson fan, yeah, and that's, and I mean, he's that's his go-to director, and, and I appreciate yeah. all this, this and, work too. But and that was a corporate job, by the way. That when I was doing the corporate, I was not like, oh, and I just I I wanted I wanted to hurt him because he hurt me so much. Yeah, and, I, and that's the feeling. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, it's you know, it, it's crazy like how much that happened in our past builds up and, and it kind of makes us who we are and it's like i've had my own situations of, of things that you know it was difficult to deal with but i'm so glad they happened because it, it propelled me you know there, there's the people who kind of accept it and they give up and that's that's the worst kind of pain but then there's you know like with you that that kind of drive to like no nah, this is this is not the end it's not it's not yeah. stopping right here yeah. it's moving forward and i mean man like you know going out trying to make films trying to pursue this type of like passion i at least from my perspective, it feels like one of the hardest passions to follow. You know, it's like, not easy, man. It's yeah. not only is it a competitive art form, it's a competitive medium, a competitive industry, but yeah. it's 
fucking hard, man. We're talking 15 hour days. We're talking writing sessions where you don't even know if you're going to go to the next fucking page. I mean, it's fucking hard, dude. Yeah. It really is. And, and, and not to throw back too much into the, the show because we want to talk about like your future works and all that. But Ooh, every, man, every second bug. watching like you guys going through like the journey i felt that you know it was it was anxiety yeah. on like my shoulders of like who ran over my laptop like you know just like oh. what, what's going on i i, I like just... to think that like for me we all we all saw the show on the yeah. and we all saw monday and and we were all just talking about that in the yeah. experience and we were talking about how like with the show like when we did our first feature film man like we were we were really proud because we did it in under 21 days in that budget of like 1200 bucks or something like that and we finished it and we were like, fuck yeah, man. Like this is a feat that not a lot of people have done, especially in El Paso. We've done really good. And then we see the show and we're like, number one, the first, I don't care who you are. If you're a filmmaker, the first thing you feel is jealousy. Cause like, come on, you're on fucking I, trouble. I, that I guy's mean, on and I'm not, come on. <laughs> you're on the troublemaker lot. You're talking to Rodriguez. You're making I films. I we're going to win. I tr- tr- or not win, but like get in. I didn't get in. I was <laughs> like, sure, I'll come in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you, you, we, that's the first feeling, right? And then the next feeling, like the law says, you start rooting for these filmmakers. You start oh, rooting yeah. for Josh and for Alejandro and for everybody because they uh, we used to, you used to identify. We identify yeah. completely with you guys, man. Like I was telling Austin, my producer, like, dude, you remember when that happened to us? You remember when fucking our actor dropped out on the day of shooting? You remember when? Yeah. I mean, dude, we identified completely with it, dude. That was the important thing for that. I think that's what Rodriguez wanted is he wants other filmmakers to fucking identify with the people on the screen. Oh yeah, definitely. That was his that was his goal. His goal he doesn't give a shit about money, dude. He doesn't give a <laughs> yeah. shit about playing the game. He's like, I wanted to do this because it's been twenty five years and do launching myself like this was what made my career. Yeah. So he wants to showcase other people and show people that it could be done. And by the way, I, I believe what you said about getting more time with him than the show gives, because when I got to talk to him, man, he he's he's number one, really easy to talk to. Yeah, and he makes you feel like you're the only fucking person in the room. And and he makes you feel like you are actually are accomplishing something, man. Like when I, when I told him, hey, man, we did 20 short films in a year. We did our first feature film on this budget. We were talking about all that. And he he looked at me. He took my card and he was like damn man you're doing it you're doing it man and I, that's all i needed like for the rest of the fucking year that's all i needed was for rodriguez to tell me that you know yeah and- it's, it's 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 kick-ass to have someone that you admire like tell you you're doing a good job like in the last episode and he's like i'm really proud i just, i almost cried there. i was like, <laughs> yeah. i was like no I'm, they're not gonna make me fucking cry and then that moment <laughs> uh- i was like mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that's true though. You, you, and you and Josh, oddly enough, were the only ones that we at least we didn't see crying on the show. I mean, uh, we did cry. <laughs> you did, <laughs> but I um, not- when I was fucking yanking my hair, like all oh, these no, yeah, yeah. white hair, and it looks dark <laughs> right now because of the the lighting. Because the and by the way, in terms of identifying with somebody on the show, man, like when you were talking to your sister about your first, I was gonna say that, right. <laughs> How is the casting process, man? Like, that's not, I don't think that's too, like, on the realistic side where you have to pick in four hours, but how was that, like, having to do that? Having to do what, like, the, 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 casting, the mega and, casting, where the it's mega just a casting, room full yeah. of, like, a hundred people oh, and... Yeah, the, I mean, it was hard, man. It was hard because they, you, I, I, I kind of suspected it. Oh, uh, so I, 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 pr- I remember it, it's, I don't know if it's, no, it's not on the show, but it was, it, it looked more calm on the show. Oh, it, it looked kind of hectic uh, though, but okay. Because we were, they were like, okay, now you have two hours to cast. And I remember screaming at my producer, which they <laughs> assign you a producing team, mm-hmm. uh, okay. your paperwork as you give it to the actors, et cetera. Sure. And I asked him, like, I can do whatever I want. Cool. And I just, like, grabbed the desk, went to the corner, and I started giving. They had them all separated by types. So I gave, oh. it gave every type. Um, excuse me. Sides, sir. Sides. And then yeah. I had them lining up. Oh, okay. Men and women. Oh, okay. And different roles. But I gave them, like, four motivations. I'm looking for these four characters. These are the motivations. Mm. You, get two, you get two reads. Okay. I, sorry, but there's just no time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a, yeah, that's 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 the 
the the re- I, I I I wanted to cast. I wanted to audition everyone. But let me ask you this, and I and I know maybe Castro may be curious about this too as an actor. Seeing the caliber, because you know, hey man, we've shot in Austin, and 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 we've obviously got to see the experience a little bit there, but and and meet the film community there. But seeing that caliber of actor, did that do anything for you? Was it less than you were, you know, used to? Was it more than you were used to of like the caliber of actor? I mean, a lot, most of these, at least according to the show, had agents already. They were getting booked for other stuff. I mean, it seems like they were on their A game, and the cast that you guys got for your films did fantastically i might add so it was it was it different from the because we know we know the new mexico film scene and we'll talk about that a little bit but was it different from the new mexico film scene was it better acting was it less than you were used to how was that i don't think it's it's a difference of better acting or anything i i i there you know there's unprofessional actors and there's professional actors and Mm -hmm. i'm lucky that i got i would ask them every time like hey so uh this is we're shooting nights and do you have kids? Because that's a big, mm. that's a big problem. Did you, sure. you know, because like we're, yeah. we're juggling scenes and we're juggling stuff. So you, you can't just go and grab an actor. You have to yeah. think about schedule. You have to think about like availability and, and, and having the right actors available at the same time. Yeah. No. Yeah. So we would have, I, I, I would ask every single one of them, like uh, not only that, but like what, what experience do you have on set? Because then I can grab someone to like, okay, he's done this. Come over here. Come, come grab this book. Come yeah, grab this. Grab yeah. this go, go help uh, this actor, uh, which was Kenny, the, the the role of of Paul, which was he was also the AD. He would help out, put stuff like we we book. couldn't stop laughing at we his role. Stop man. laughing, man. <laughs> He's fantastic. He's, he's great. Yeah. He's a close friend of yours too, right? Yeah, yeah, he is. And then Kenneth, and he's he's AD for me. Jesus, like several short films and Monday and and Millennium Bugs. Oh wow, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Shout out to Paul. Yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to to the character, right? But the, yeah. uh, I want to ask you about um, about that experience, man. I think I think um, I again, like we said, we don't want this to be a play by play. If you, if you're interested in seeing Rebel without, if you're a filmmaker, you need to watch it for your own sake. It's almost yes. like really good. It's almost like reading the book, the reading Robert's book, but with the different, the five different perspectives of these filmmakers. It truly is. Yeah. Um, and I highly, re- I highly recommend the book. First of all, it's it's my go to when I I'm starting a feature. But watch the show if you enjoy that. I want to ask you from all of these perspectives. We saw pre production, but with the exception of the writing, obviously. Except in your case, you had to rewrite one of the main characters to be mm. a girl, right? But we saw the pre production, production, and some of post, and obviously the the screening. But what was your takeaway from all of that experience, man? That just being on the show, talking to Robert, talking to these other talented filmmakers. What was your takeaway, man? What did you get out of that? Um, that I'm glad I did it, but I don't want to do it again. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, no, it's it's not. E- it wasn't easy. It yeah. was very tough. And I and I remember that I almost didn't take it because I even oh. I, I called him going, if I I swear, if I say yes, and then there's a shit where it's like you have to you have to dig your hands in this pile of uh, of poop to find a key that later. T- <laughs> oh, okay, that's what you think. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. I walk. I was like, I will fucking walk because yeah, I'm yeah. Not- that's it, dude. If I was 25, cool. But I was at the time. I think I was 35, 34, or whatever. How? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. But you know what? At least one thing we saw, Alejandro, was that. Um, we all agreed that the first thing that we saw, and I'm sure you've gotten this before, is that you were the most prepared. <laughs> yeah, um, you were even helping out the other people with the lighting the while they're having you. panic attacks over there. Uh, the most experienced and kind of not. I wouldn't. Uh, everybody was driven. Everybody was motivated. But you had the most calmness, man, on set. Like you had the most calmness on. All right, yeah, well, you got. Let we him got to need you. I, I was, I was, I, w- I was screaming inside. <laughs> yeah. But that's the point like of being. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. the point of being a director, man. Like you, uh, I, I can, I can attest to that. I'm screaming inside, but my crew can't see me screaming. Mm. My crew, my my cast, my crew can't see me freaking out. Uh, you have to present that 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 uh, strong, you know, leadership, leadership yeah. at the end of the day. And also, like, I feel like that was that was a. Uh, it's in the in, in the episode. I remember our toughest day was. The explosion thing when I, I had that little speech to people like hey guys right. like, this isn't personal like I understand that this isn't the way to make a fucking movie but this is where the situation where we're at yeah and if it's gonna be on celluloid let's let's knock it out of the park because yeah. it's it's recorded forever yeah no I don't I don't regret being it what did I take out of it I I, I took that 
there should be an improvisational element to all filmmaking, even sure. if it's a certain percentage. Yes. Because everything changed. Everything changed. And I, I think as long as you can make yourself to be a problem solver almost instantly, yeah. you're going to yeah. be, I, you know. I, I've said this, man. Like, I've anytime anybody's asked me, I've had some people in my crew or just filmmakers that are barely getting into it. Uh, if there's anything I've learned and, and what I take with me to set every day, and I don't know if you agree with me or not, is um, – something bad's going to happen. It's going to like whatever it, you, it's going to happen on set. So if you prepare yourself with the mentality of like, you know what, prepare yourself as much as you can, but knowing something's going to go wrong, then when that thing happens, you were already prepared for it. So it's not going to throw you for a loop. You, it's almost like it was on the schedule at seven Oh five PM shit went down the drain and I had to fix it. You know, it, it's almost like it's on the schedule. So I, I don't know if you agree with that mentality, but as far as that improvisational element that you're saying, I think you have to be prepared for the worst and hope for the best at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. Totally. So you you get out of Rebels. I mean, let's talk about Monday because Monday is, is, is intertwined and will forever be intertwined with Rebel. Before we move on, we all saw it, man. We thought it was a fantastic picture. We thought very much that you have a style. I, by the way, I caught all the yeah, all, all the, the homages or what do you call all them? the homages? Tarantino, yeah, the homages yeah. to Tarantino, the whip pan homages to to Scorsese. The, I mean, I, I gotta ask. I, my bad, my bad, Carlos. I gotta ask. Oh. Do you watch? It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Of course. Oh, it was that where you got the, the the random times? Or why why did you include it like that? Oh, the random times was just. I love to, that. Just to show the progress uh, the progression of the day. No, oh, okay. I, I thought yeah. it kind of tied in with the It's Always Sunny kind of like. Oh, like no. If, um, uh, did you guys see? Okay, as nerds, as nerds, because this is like, like one of my proudest. Did you guys see that there's a big kahuna menu? In my yes, yeah, that's yes, yes, I yeah. pointed that out right <laughs> off the bat. I was losing my shit. <laughs> as like, long as you go practice the scene, I'm like, no, let's make the dude. Fun. We were, we were yeah, watching. Yeah, yeah. We were watching like a watch party, and then we just paused it. It's like, look, it's just yeah, it's party. Party. <laughs> yeah. Well, they have Chango beer from Desperado, dude. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. had nice. Chango beer in the movie, so you see the bottles and it says Chango beer, and yeah, yeah, yeah. that's they awesome. They gave man. us in the show like you should you should pick five or six uh, uh, props. props. Yeah, was that from the prop house? Yeah, I mean. Oh, okay. Robert opens this like um, warehouse, this airplane, warehouse, yeah. whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. A prop, hangar, a hangar, and he has a bunch of props. So I told him like, can I? And and there was a sticker, there was a Chango beer sticker. And I'm like, hey, can I use this? And I can, can I duplicate it? And they were like, yeah, sure. So I was like, there it is. Dang, <laughs> hey, man, we saw somebody get uh, uh, Machetta's vest for crying out loud. Oh, I know. And then dude. she would use it. <sighs> she didn't end up using it? And she did, but it wasn't like feature. Like it, it like, wasn't. Kill like, someone to like <laughs> take it off and shit. That's so somebody could be like, oh, that's Machete. Yeah. <laughs> and, no, oh, man, but, but we caught all the homages. And I, again, now that I know you're a Scorsese. <laughs> Ben, I, I saw a lot of like after hours in there. Oh, very much. Oh, yeah. After hours, yeah. after hours, Shaun of the Dead, Pineapple Express, Lethal yeah. Weapon. Dude. Even a little bit of Friday there, sprinkled on there. A little bit of Friday. Yeah. A little bit of Friday. It's 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 all in there. It's just like I was gonna go and do another film, which is one of my the, one of my favorite projects that I've ever made, uh, was a romantic comedy mm. about a girl who has to cut like uh, pop culture, cold turkey, because it's 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 skewing her possibilities of finding love and finding herself. And okay. she starts creating these expectations. Sure. So I was going to do that movie, but knowing that there was no crew, I wasn't going to be able to accomplish that by myself. Sure, you know? sure, sure. Yeah. Even just licensing for the pop culture stuff is a is a is a headache. Yeah, yeah. So we did Monday because I felt like the handheld element would lend itself to the hecticness of the sure. day. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely escalate. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, and we can see that, and and and, and no, 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 we, I can, we could definitely see that, and I, I can relate, man. Like I, when we spoke earlier on the phone, we, I talked to you about how we did multiple or two, at least two day challenges, forty eight hour challenges here in town, and we were, we were blessed enough to win those uh, two years in a row, uh, the audience award and first place and stuff. But we back to back, we did, yeah, we did, uh, yeah, and Castro was my lead in both, actually, which oddly enough, um, I tried, <laughs> but. Um, I, I I'm the type of guy that likes because we're Scorsese files or whatever. I like oneers, man. I love long takes. Yeah. I love motion in the camera. I love steady cam. And the first time around, it was all handheld. That's all we had. 
we did a zombie film, like I told you, and it, it lent itself to the hecticness, like you said. Um, and the second time around, I, I we were a little more prepared. We had a little more crew, and and uh, we were able to bust out the the steady cam and bust out the dolly and and put a little more production value into it. But it lends itself to to the. I mean, dude, we literally from conception, literally from conception of the idea to turning in the film, it's forty eight hours. It's nuts. And I feel similar to you. And like, it was a great thing to do, but I don't think we're ever going to do it again. <laughs> It's fun to do it once or twice, but it's not yeah. fair for your actors. It's not fair for your editors. Your it's producers. not. That's true. It's it's a crash course. It's just that thing that yeah. you do because what you mm -hmm. learn from it is you know you'll you'll you can't learn that from anywhere else. You know that kind of quick no. just jumping into filmmaking and jumping into like a very gritty like I only got like one day to get twelve scenes done, and you know that that's what we got to work with. You know. And so. it's it's in your in your and I I relate to that in that sense, but through Monday we we saw that. It lent itself to the genre too. I mean, just just the the comedic element of it too. Mm -hmm. If you're able to move camera from point A to point B in a, in a, in a particular motion, that's going to make it more comedic. Whatever the delivery of the actor's line is, and I, we saw that, man. We saw that for sure. Um, sure. How how was your cast, man? Like, how did you feel about your cast for Monday? I mean, we we thought they were terrific. Oh, dude, I I couldn't be prouder. I couldn't be happier with the cast. Like, that was one of the things that um, about what I just said is uh hopefully john can attest to, uh, attest to that is is it's not easy to go back and forth with your actors on emotionality especially if they're spiking the emotion whether it's up or down mm -hmm. but to just have them like do it do it do it do it do it do it yeah. so um they i tried as much as possible to not do that but uh, i obviously didn't succeed as much because there was you know it's we it's had eight hours. it's a time we had, eight, we had yeah. eight hour days we didn't have 12. oh wow we eight hour days was that a union thing or, or why, why eight yeah. hours it's because the production company uh the people that are recording us are union so they oh. can only do 12 oh. and our gotcha. or 11 because then they have to travel and once they've done traveling that's 12 and for us we were an hour away from location so it's an oh, hour man. and an hour back so there goes two Got gotcha. you. Yeah. Got gotcha. you. I, I will say, man, I, I what I love about your film compared to the other films and all of the films have a special place, man. They really do. They really do. But what I love about your film in terms of what, what I caught, at least, again, we got to see Red Eleven when when Robert premiered it at the El Paso Film Festival. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, after South by Southwest, obviously, but we got to see it and, and he did kind of this masterclass element to the film. And I mean, obviously, he shot the entire thing at troublemakers right at the studio lot and i saw that you shot a significant amount of of shots it at troublemaker the office stuff and the door and the parking to, lot and, and i love i love that element about it because it to me that's kind of the the linear thing with robert's red 11 is i was able to connect those dots of like they really did one of them was made out to be this medical lab and alejandro's was made out to be the office was made out to be the parking lot was made you know so i i love that about your film to to just to as a nerd like as you say just to kind of pinpoint those little like oh that was shot at troublemaker like that you know like you have the machete taco truck in the background yeah in the background oh, so, that was like, yeah <laughs> yeah nice. dude, yeah yeah so i i, I can I appreciate that when we did dude we were so ambitious and filmmakers don't try this at home but when we shot sun city lights man our first short film ever we all got this we, we all got to shoot at antones i don't know if you know you're familiar with antones yeah. um antones nightclub it's a it's a legendary blues club if you're a blues fan like me man it's this amazing blues club in in austin yeah. and we got the okay to shoot there and to use the band from there and we literally drove from el paso to austin in one one night got a hotel shot the entire day and drove back to El Paso that night because we had to go to work the next day. I'm not even bullshitting you. So while we were in Austin, we had a couple of hours in between locations and we were like, let's just go to Troublemakers and see what we find. Like there might be a fucking gay, but let's just go fuck around a little bit. So we drove to the Troublemaker lot and parked. And obviously there's a fucking gate there, so we couldn't go past that. But um, we got to go to the prop house a little bit and just got to connect with the guy there and, and uh, the one that's right next to it. Nerd out a little bit. And nerd yeah. out a little bit, but that's as far as we got, man. But that's why we recognize, like, dude, the fucking gate, dude, the this, the the hanger, the this, the that. We just recognized it all. Was the guy that you guys did the 
props was did he have long hair like Kenny Powers? Yeah, he did. Yeah, I think he so. He did. I know yeah. he is the nicest fucking guy. Yeah, he, he was is. cool. He's cool. Yeah. Is actually Kenny. It, it is Kenny. Yeah, 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 Kenny. Yeah, I'm, I still, we still, I, I have his email address because that's what he told like us. The man. nicest like, guy ever. He, he let us in, man. He got it. Let us see the, all the stuff that he had there. And then he was like, Hey man, what are you guys doing? We're, like, oh, we're filmmakers. We're from El Paso. He's like, Oh, that's awesome, man. Like, I like to check new stuff out. What's your page? Yeah. And like, he literally took down like our website and our, our Facebook and stuff. And was like, email me anything you guys want me to promote, man. And we're like, Oh shit. Yeah, dude, for sure. Nice. Like, nicest fucking guy in the world, dude. You're absolutely yeah. right. Nice guy. Yeah, but uh, we got as far as that, man. We didn't get past the gates like you, but uh, but it was it was fun just to do that, you know. I can't to- get past the gates anymore, dog. I'm old, <laughs> I'm old now. I'm all new. Uh, you know, one of our one of our it, one of our guys in Tower, he's he's been my DP. His name's Michael. You know, we we've talked, and he was like, you know what, man. I don't know how to feel about Red Eleven because to be fair, yes, he used everything in his, you know, in his scope, but he got to shoot on the fucking Alita set that was in his backyard. <laughs> so I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> It was, and it was, it was amazing. That was, dude. Okay, this it sounds like I'm bragging, but I no, 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 please, so please. I'm like, want to know this? We partied in the. That was the South by Southwest party in the Elitist. Oh, that's okay. too it cool. Was, it was fully functional, which, which, which means that there was like waiters with one wheel and like <laughs> no shit. Way, dude. What the hell? All the stores <laughs> were working and the lights and what? And, and you would hear the the off. Offshore, yeah, no like, way, blah, dude. Blah, blah, blah. Like, it was fucking. Uh, well, I mean, in the show, we got to see where you guys met Robert in that bar. That's the bar he's used for so many films, including the bar scene in Alita, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome, dude. I mean, hey, don't it, you're was, not, it, was, it was a nerd out moment, like, fucking, uh, we're, yeah. we're not gonna look at you like that, asshole, man. You got to tell these stories on this podcast. That's what, yeah, the, that's, yeah. Uh, here's another one. Here's another one, but it's like, if this is this is about the fat boy in me, okay, okay. <laughs> We, we had the party, right? And then, um, uh, do, do you guys know a lot of like like the barbecue scene in, in, in Austin? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we went to uh, uh, Franklin's Barbecue. Fucking yes. perfect, perfect, chef, dude, chef, John Favreau, chef. That's why we went yeah. there. <laughs> so we were we were we were drinking, and um, uh, they were like setting up all that shit. And I'm like, wow, oh, what's What's that? So I talked to Cecilia, which is like the, the president of El Rey. She's like, yeah. "Oh, Franklin's is, uh, is 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 catering." Yeah. So while everyone's mingling to like make their future happen, mm-hmm. Alejandro was slowly <laughs> migrating to where yeah. <laughs> priorities, man. Does that sound like something I would do, <laughs> dude? And it was, I'm telling you, man, like uh, when we went to Austin, I told these guys, like without knowing any knowledge about the fucking line around the block and all that shit. Right. I told these guys, like, we got to go to Franklin's, bro. That's where Chef was shot. You know, they shot a scene there and I heard the barbecue is amazing. We got to go. And every time, even me and my wife, when we go to Austin, we have to go to Franklin's every fucking time. But I, I swear, I nerded out so much that I, with my phone, I like recreated the scene in uh. Chef. <laughs> like I fucking did that when we ate at Franklin's for the first time. Guys, we got another one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But uh, but the food is amazing. So I, I can fucking fantastic. Yeah, and yeah. they run out. They actually do run out yeah. on oh, a yeah. daily basis. So that's the most badass thing. It's like it's like, hey, first come for serve. So it, it, everyone We're out, everybody out. That's crazy. Man. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, I I got I got seconds, dog. I got seconds. Oh yeah, dude, this guy got <laughs> to go and stuff. <laughs> shit. Wait. Oh yeah, dude, I got to go because I took it for somebody. Like I put it in a freezer bag and shit, and took it back home. To you know how it is to drive ten hours with that smell. You just want to <laughs> eat it, man. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, man, but that that's fantastic, dude. I mean, look, if you if yeah. you think of any more stories, please let let them loose here. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go for it, bro. Go for it, man. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. You wrap Monday, and again, like I said, we we thought it was a fantastic film, and your cast was amazing. The locations you chose were amazing, um, and and again, it just it's that lighthearted. I think the first thing Castro, in fact, said when we picked up the film was like, "It's got the super bad vibes." Um, it's got the, that combi- beat. <laughs> the combination of the soundtrack and and that's by the way that's a Scorsese thing too. I don't want to. I don't want to oh, brag. Oh man, Scorsese, Tarantino, Edgar the use Friday, of soundtrack. The use of soundtrack. Bro. I mean, a good. That was what. That was one of the things I saved the most for. I saved seventeen hundred dollars for that soundtrack because it oh. would soundtrack made the movie. 
because I was it, I was waiting for for the Mamas and the Papas Monday song to come on, man. I was waiting for it. <laughs> that expensive. Hey, we got sleigh bells. That was pretty. Cool. Yes, yeah, so that, that was that was dope. Eric Charge does. We're the nicest people ever. Oh, oh that's, yeah, that's man. Dope. It's it's nice when you encounter people like that. We got we got to use one of Stevie Ray Vaughan's songs for one of my shorts, and and they were the nicest people, man. They 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 awesome, dude. they didn't charge us as much as we thought they were going to charge us, so that was fun. Um, John Mayer's people were surprisingly nice to us when we did a, a song of his for a, a festival uh, cut. I would have thought different. John Mayer would have been a kind of a. Well, but he might be, but his people weren't. I mean, oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you know, so, but anyways, um, yeah. um, the use of soundtrack in Mondays is obviously fantastic. We move on. You've done a significant amount of shorts after Monday. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about Tuesday as well, because, you know, you and I were talking about how Tuesday. Uh, That's the sequel? The, yeah, There's a sequel in the works? The sequel, the sequel is what, uh, nice. from what I understand, Alejandro, the script has already been finished. But the the funding is obviously something that I want to talk about because <laughs> because all filmmakers go through it, man. We've gone through it and, and talking to investors and talking to people about the budget. And then it falls through because we don't want to give up so much control or whatever, Ooh. whatever the reason might be. It Tuesday, happened twice, dude. I just I just I just walked away from a film right now because I could not I couldn't see eye to eye with the producers. And it's like, mm. I, wow, I don't want to yeah. well, want to spend a year edit or shooting editing if it's not a film that your heart's not in right? yeah exactly it's, if i I'm agree not, work at fucking sprint or something yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you shoot and that's if you saw the the rebel series then you understand that the the film recap tells us that alejandro secured funding for tuesday which was true yeah. but he decided to walk away from that um and and make it into a graphic novel which i think is awesome hey. you make it into a comic book right yeah. tell us a little bit about that what what what, what happened there yeah we we screened at soho film festival in new york which is like i say if, if you guys have a project submit there it's one of the it's it's a great festival they're incredibly supportive and the parties are the shit new york is awesome so it's, it's win, 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 nice everywhere. all you gotta say is new york new york dude <laughs> it's the shit and and we we screened the movie with an nyu short film okay. so i was fucking i was really scared because yeah. And NYU, I mean NYU, and they gave you thirty, you know, they give you thirty, forty thousand dollars, and that's your thesis. And then I'm like, all right. And, and yeah, you're talking about Spike Lee, Scorsese. I mean, a bunch of people have come out of Greta Gerwig. A bunch of people have come out of fucking NYU, dude. It's, it's, so they get they get a pretty significant uh, budget. Yeah. Sure. And they're usually well, not usually, but you know, like I've I've met a couple of NYU students, and I've gathered that they like doing drama as the as the first one. That's sure. the big one. Uh, and then it comes the stoner barfing, farting, drinking comedy. <laughs> that's a second. That's a second one now. Okay. Yeah, but it was great because we they opened and I was like, "Fuck!" So I had that. It, I met an investor that actually flew to New York to see this premiere. Oh, oh wow! He were, I was just checking the lines because it's like whatever the impression that she gets uh, is dependent on if we get budget or not. So yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. We we did really well with the attendance and 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 people responded a lot to the film and it was. Sure. It was just it, it was it was it was really special to kind of like tell people how we made this movie. It was like, oh, it was seven grand, and we had fourteen days and shit. Yeah. Like, we, people people really responded well, and 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 yeah, man, that was uh, that was a great experience. That the investor just like wrote down a check for a hundred thousand dollars. Was like, I want you to do the sequel, and and I said, no, let's. Let's do this. Let's do this right. How about when we get you get to your house and I get to my house, we set up a contract, we sign it, so you see that it's gonna be legit and there's nothing. Yeah, no, no. I'm not trying to fucking, you give me a check out to cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> careful. Yeah. And she was unless unless they ask for something in return, man. I don't know. I don't know. My husband was there and shit. <laughs> 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 and he was um. She wasn't prepared to 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 see how long it takes for a lot of shit in Hollywood to happen. And oh. by Hollywood, I mean because we were, El Ray was behind us, right? To do the, the network. Sequel. Yeah. Oh so, wow, that's cool. Was she? Was she? Was she? And and feel free not to answer this question. Was she somebody that was? Um, I, I don't want to say known, but at the very least, cemented in the film industry, or no? She was just kind of trying to break into that route. Mm. Yeah, that's what it was. Gotcha. Yeah. Hence the. Hence the. I think she. 
she thought that I was like sugarcoating, like, oh, you probably don't know Robert that well while he's like emailing me and shit, like going, dude, he's got he's got that Netflix movie that's coming yeah. out. We, uh, we are the heroes or we, we are the, yeah. Yeah. like, dude, I've known about all this shit because yeah. we tried to get him on millennium bugs as the owner of the video store. Oh, oh, that oh been, nice. He's in, New York, he's in LA with fucking Spielberg. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on. But at the, le- at the very least you got, you got these emails and I know you guys probably text and, and you're still, you still have oh, that dude. relationship. You don't. My chat that don't text, dog. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't think he texts. You know? I would expect it, but at the very least, you have some form of contact with him. Yeah, to, he's, a, to... he's a great guy, dude. He he's a great guy, and 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 uh, all continues continues to to inspire. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's breaking. I've been saying this a lot, man, because he broke off. There's a, there's a very famous interview with him and, and Tarantino on the on the show called The Director's Chair. If you haven't seen it, it's also on El Rey. And and I just I get a little bit pissed off at Tarantino on that show because Tarantino obviously significantly double down machete El Rey. yeah and and fucking Tarantino kind of kind of kind of bashes Rodriguez a little bit because of of Grindhouse and kind of said like after <laughs> after the the lack of success of Grindhouse I was like I'm not gonna do another stinker with you and went <laughs> off went off to fucking do uh, Inglorious Bastards Where's that, that? Was, that was the next thing after Grindhouse because he's like, I'm not going to have a failure of a film type of deal. But what I love about Rodriguez is to him, it wasn't that. It wasn't a failure. It was what he wanted to do. It yeah. was exactly – he knows exactly what he's doing. He's developed a friendship with James – with 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 Jim Cameron and with Spielberg, with all these guys. He's, he ha- is a Hollywood player, but – I've told everybody this. This is the beginning of his comeback into mainstream, not into comeback of, of filmmaking. He's always done the films he's wanted to make liberally and d- not answer to anybody. That's everybody. Every filmmaker's dream is not have to answer to anybody, mm-hmm. right? But but when it comes to being a Hollywood player and doing blockbusters, if you guys got to see Alita, I mean, uh, it's, it's a true character of what he can do if yeah. he wanted to. You know, but if, if there's filmmakers that don't want to do that, and that's admirable, man, that's fucking admirable to, to not be tempted by the money. I just heard a recently an interview with El Toro yeah. where he, he says that, uh, I don't know if you caught that, Alejandro, but him and Cuaron did a conversation at the Universidad I didn't de Mexico. Hear it, but I, I was going to, it was like four or five days ago or something. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, just recently I saw it, and they were talking about how one time after he did Blade 2, um, everybody was offering everything under the sun with superhero movies money like a lo, a lo pendejo like and all the money he wanted you know and and del toro was like you know what I, he told cuaron i think i'm gonna do it man like the fucking money's tempting like i'm just gonna fucking do it bro and cuaron was like i don't know man i don't know and, and cuaron's even like el gordo nunca nos hace caso like del toro never fucking <laughs> listens to what me and niñarito tell him like the advice we give him he always does his own shit and then he's like, Cuaron's like, I'm the opposite. When they give me advice, I take it. Like, I really do take it. And he's like, so he's like, we finished talking about it at some cafe. The Toro's like, I took a taxi home and I, and I got off the taxi and I realized I left my fucking notebook with Pan's Labyrinth, all my notes for Pan's Labyrinth in the fucking taxi. Man. And, and he took it just to show to Cuaron and kind of pitch him the idea a little bit. But he's like, nah, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the big money movies. And then when he got into his house, he like prayed. He's like, I prayed to every God in the universe, man. And was <laughs> like, God, there is. I promise I learned my lesson. I'm not going to do the big money movies. I'm going to do the true filmmaking, you know, <laughs> and that the fucking taxi driver came to knock on his door and was like, hey, man, did you lose this? Oh, and my that God. very instant. So he's like, that's when I knew I got to make Pan's Labyrinth. I'm not going to take the money route. Dude, that's fucking admirable. And look how how amazing Pan's Labyrinth and all of yeah. the work since then has been. I mean, yeah. it just comes to show that's the type of filmmaker Rodriguez is, and you gotta admire that. You have to fucking. Oh yeah, it. yeah. No, the guy doesn't. The guy doesn't uh, answer to no one. You know, like that's it, so cool. You know, it's he knows how to do a movie. He knows how to do it less expensive. And yeah, no, you admire that shit. You admire that he's like, okay, if you're gonna spend. As we're younger, as we as when we're younger, we're trying. We we always. Uh, are you guys my age? Younger? You're way younger. I'm younger. We're we're uh, we're about there. I mean, uh, I, well, I'm I'm 25. I'm 31. Close. You're 31. I He's probably are fucking young, dude. I'm five. Ah, ya estoy ruco, güey. Ya estoy ya no. They they you know as you get older, it's not about how many movies you make. It's how good they are. Yeah. And yeah. and that's what I like about both perspectives from Tarantino to 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 rodriguez because rodriguez is all about creative constantly yeah but but he switches 
because Alita is not the same as Planet Terror, and Planet Terror is not the same as the Spike the, Kids. The new one, the Spy Kids movie that's coming yes. out. Freaking Shark Boy and Lava Girl. I mean, the whole the whole continuation, yeah, that whole thing. Yeah, it looks fantastic. I, I saw the trailer; it looks really good. And then and then he's he's you know he's directing episodes for Mandalorian. Like he's, yeah, yeah, and not just that. He just he just insane. directed he just directed a fucking music video for two of the biggest artists literally in the world, Ariana Grande and Lady Gaga. What? And Lady Gaga did a cameo in Sin City, man, in the in the sequel. And uh, and I'm sure they developed a relationship from that. And and I mean, I'm, Rodriguez is the guy that you call, man. Like they wow. called him and like, hey, man, we got a new music video, and it's very much in the Rodriguez style. He didn't fucking compromise. That music video looks like it was shot by Rodriguez. Ariana Grande is the biggest fucking artist in the world right now. Literally, the success of A Star Is Born catapulted fucking Lady Gaga even further into stardom, dude. So those two making a music video with Rodriguez, I mean, come on, dude. He's still he's still that guy. He's still that Hollywood player that gets the cause, bro. That's that's yeah, no, he's constantly working, dude. Constantly, constantly doing something else. Always yeah. doing something. He's always yeah. doing something. But anyways, man, getting back to Monday and getting back to this investor, you, I, I love that. You, you must have learned that from guys like Rodriguez, guys like Tarantino as well. Like, you you decided to walk away from it, and that's tempting, man. That's fucking that's ballsy. very tempting. That's well, ballsy. Didn't respond to my calls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but that's, it, yeah, but but it was like but that's the point. That's it I mean, was like oh okay, well shit. <clears throat> what do I do now? So that's when I started writing Millennium books. Millennial Bugs. Millennial Bugs is your newest film, which you can see the trailer on, by the way, on Alejandro, I love the idea of that Alejandro one. AlejandroMontoyaMarin.com. <laughs> That's you all can- it takes, that idea. My bad, my bad, Carlos. <laughs> no, no, no. I just want to reiterate that you can see uh, not all of his work, uh, all of his work on his website, and there's links to all of his work, but the trailer is of Millennial Bugs is on there, and like Astro says, man, it's a very interesting idea. Unique. I know you're, you're, you're an individual who loves the 90s, and you love that pop culture, and that's, I mean, we're all kind of 90s babies and and we get that we get that world so tell us a little bit about that film what's that what's that yeah and it's also on youtube if you gotta go if you go to youtube i have several of my short films there but yeah millennium is a uh, is a dramedy is a dramedy set in the last week of 1999 yes during the y2k craze and it's about two friends from polar opposite backgrounds trying to navigate how they're going to jump to the next stage in life while everyone thinks the world's ending gotcha Damn. Okay. <laughs> a, you, man. It's a fun <laughs> movie. I, I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with it. And it was it was another different kind of rebel without a crew. This time I had a crew, but it was it's you're always gonna be struggling in projects. Was was your budget significantly different? Was it yeah, it was a little better. It was a little bit better. Still not eight thousand. Still not six <laughs> digits, but still, you know, some cool, some cool. something. No, but, no, yeah. yeah. But it's something and and with a crew, so this time I was able to, you know, relax. Even though I was not relaxed, I was able to relax a little bit more. Yeah, and yeah more. Will be yeah. more appealing. Mm. But you had fun. Ultimately, that was the story you wanted to tell. You had fun telling it. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, Alejandro, but right now you, we can't quite find it anywhere because it's currently seeking its distribution home, right? Is that where yes. it's at? Yeah, we did a uh, uh, we did a couple of film festivals during quarantine because I thought it would be the perfect way for people to watch it from home. Sure. Mm. But uh, we've gotten some some really cool interest from uh, several platforms and, and the distribution um, and people. So we're working that out to see where we would find a home for it. So then we can promote it as, hey, it's finally out. Yeah. yeah. beautiful. And by the way, Monday, guys, if you're listening, you can catch, you can watch on Amazon Prime right now. Um, yes, and, for free. Uh, for free. For free on Amazon Prime. So check that out. Um, what I think is very interesting Alejandro, uh, contrary to popular opinion or contrary to some uh, the way every filmmaker thinks differently. Let me just point that out right off the bat. But when I made my first feature, we did it backwards, man. We made a short. I made a feature. And then after the feature, we made this 20 film campaign. And I, I directed maybe eight of those 20 mm-hmm. and and wrote and directed. And, and then now my producers are getting pissed off at me because anytime I write a short, it's fucking 30, 40 pages long. <laughs> and they're like, no, nah, man, you know, and I, and I agree with that. I'm more real, very much into the, the, the feature mentality. I've been, I've been having a much easier time just writing features. Um, in your case, you finish Monday and you do a couple of shorts in between 
and then you you know you do millennial bug and then you're still working on shorts so what's that you know what's your mentality about that is that is that just a i need to practice so you don't get rusty is that a yeah is that what it is or tell us about that well i mean it's it's always practice because you just get better at storytelling sure i think i think it's it's i use every short film kind of like a test to see if i can go to the next one <laughs> like like yeah. Prince, like the first, show, I, I had a second, I had a second wave, um, which by the way, remind me to tell you the whole Rushmore story, which is why I, I got into. Yeah. We'll come back to that. Yeah. 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 But um, the, in the second wave of film, I, I kind of try to test myself the, as first to like, Hey, I'm, I'm writing, I'm writing a, a, a short film where English is my, English is my second language. So I, you know, just to make it not appeal like that. Sure. Then from okay. there, the, sec- the next kind of like challenge was, well, I'm going to do a 48 hour challenge, which is kind of like what you guys did, which is also in my YouTube. If you watch it, it's called the yeah. Joneses, the Joneses, super stressful, super fucking stressful. But then from there, uh, you know, every project is a little bit of a challenge. The next one I was like, well, no, the lead's going to be uh, a woman. And I want them to not think that it was written by a fat Mexican man. <laughs> And then the next one was the Monday short film where it's like, all right, enough with the romantic comedy. Let's do some action. And then I went immediately to no- drama. There's like no joke. And in case you, and in case you didn't know that, of course, it's important to mention that Monday the feature film was based on Monday the short film. That's that's where you got that idea, right? That's mm-hmm. that's where. Was it just expanding on the short film, or was it your take on, you know, I, I have a bigger story to tell here? Or uh, how did you think of that? No, it's just expanding on the short film. <laughs> it's just expanding cool. and make, give, giving, giving because the, the the short film is so quick. It's like ten minutes. It's it's even it's, it goes it goes quick. <laughs> and 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 that was one of the complaints by my DP, which not Ryan, but another guy named yeah. Ariel Rakes. And uh, he was like, "Well, I just this project. I don't really identify with the character. There's not really a character arc. I'm like, it's not about that. Yeah, you've been yeah. little sprinkles. It's just just have fun. Yeah." No, no, definitely, man. Definitely, man. I think, I think, um, I think it's important to note that because then people think that. Well, by the way, the pacing on Monday, the feature film was perfect, man. I mean, yeah. the pacing was great because you didn't. It didn't feel long. In fact, it kind of felt. I, I, I got. I got to tell you, Alejandro. I, I wanted. I want. Man, maybe that's what the sequel is about. I don't know. I wanted your lead to end up with the hit girl, man. I wanted. I wanted him to end up with her. That was my kind of mentality. Um, Watch what? Read the comic book. Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Where can we get the different. comic book though? Um, where we should be releasing it soon, man. Like I just, I literally just gave adjustments for like the introduction page. So we're going to have an introduction page and a QR code for you to watch Monday in case you need a refresher. Hey, uh, that's smart. There's, smart. there's a QR code uh, for the soundtrack. So you can be reading as there's music. Hey. In the soundtrack. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you can kind of get a little bit more immersed and, and innovation little jokes that hopefully you guys can check out because yeah dude it's a basically about relationships the second feature uh, two, is more about relationships and how diverse they are from like siblings to the first romantic love to divorced it's interesting oh, okay i, I want to see that but you got to send that to us as soon as as soon as it's out you got to <laughs> so it's cool because you can have fun with it man oh, it's many and, ideas uh, so many ideas fun, dude. and i hopefully hopefully one day we can make the movie because it, it really is it's it's an action comedy but it's like on a blanket of relationships it's got a heart it's got yeah. a ton of heart man it's got a ton of heart you see that right off the bat um i gotta ask you man you're you're based out of new mexico um like I told you on the phone earlier, we're in El Paso. We're literally bordered with Las Cruces. Um, and that's kind of what makes the El Paso film scene so unique because we're bordered with Las Cruces, New Mexico, and we're bordered with Juarez Chihuahua. So it's this really traject this trifecta really of, of filmmakers of these three places that come together. Um, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, these are these are hot spots right now for film, whether whether we 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 think El Paso should be or not, you know, <laughs> it's uh it's it's really New Mexico is getting the work right now, man. I mean, they're shooting a ton of stuff up there, and you're based out of there. Um, in fact, so much so that Netflix has established their brand new studio, what? Uh, in, in Albuquerque Studios, you know, in, in ABQ Studios. Then I'm gonna go live over there. Then it, that's uh-huh. that's where it's at. Okay. Now we have a ton of people that left from uh, from El Paso and went up there, man. That's that that's where it's at. Uh, you know, places like Atlanta, places like at, Santa Fe and, and Albuquerque. What's up? 
Why are you staying in El Paso? You know, you know why, Alejandro? Because there's there's a flourishing film scene out here that that not just us, not just Tower, man. Definitely not just Tower, but we're one of the companies that is bringing it forward, man. And we're getting a ton more films getting shot here, feature films from from different places. So we want to develop our hometown a little bit, man, before we go off. But what's important is that we do go off. We do leave to go shoot something weeks at a time, and then we'll come back home and still be based out of here. So that's kind of the important thing for us is we want to do, we want El Paso to become one of those cities, man. And we feel like it's becoming an Austin and Albuquerque in terms of hotspots for filming. So we want to continue developing that, that, talent here the, really the, the only thing bad thing is that we're next to the worst city in the world shout out to juaritos <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh, the only bad thing yeah yeah unfortunately but uh but even that man we also one of our goals here in el paso with all the most of the filmmakers that are doing it right we want to get rid of the stigma that el paso is this is a cartel town you know Shit, and i just that's all, that. god damn it because <laughs> that's all that's all we see man that's that's anybody that hears el paso or juarez thinks oh that's the that's yeah. the that's the perspective and we want to get rid of that stigma because there's so many beautiful stories to tell outside of that man significantly a big amount for sure um, so that's that's why el paso is kind of where we're at right now but we go to shoot stuff in New Mexico all the, all the time, man. We have friends that, you know, for instance, our buddy Vimon just did Death in Texas up in, in Santa Fe with, with Bruce Dern. Um, so we, we get out there, man. Uh, our buddy Raul, shout out to Raul. He's been on, on this podcast. He just did a shoot for MTV last week in Albuquerque, you know. Oh, wow. So we, we, we get up there, man. We get up there and come down and stuff and, and, and try to do that. Much like Rodriguez, man. He'll go shoot a film in mostly in austin right but he'll go shoot something in vancouver la and then come back home to austin that's kind of the the ideal right now but i want to talk about the new mix new mexico film scene that's where you're based out of uh and i want to see kind of your connection right now you're currently in laredo um oh so what's that like man what's what's that southeast filmmaker experience like for you is that is that something you're wanting to keep moving forward oh, with or? um new mexico and albuquerque just in general have always been really supportive and I've been able to uh, I've been able to do whatever I wanted film wise there just because people are it's starting to tag up on like the whole like well Hollywood pays this so why should I do this for you Indy but mm -hmm. but it's 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 a place that definitely needs to be more nurtured for the independent filmmaker which I just had a conversation with a producer that wants to start this this new project to kind of emphasize that for like below uh, above the line uh, talent. So sure. I love New Mexico. I think there's so much potential. I, 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 I will be shooting a, a movie or, or two there, but I definitely like, I feel like my next stage in life is I have to do my, a Spanish speaking movie. Like I really sure. do. like, I've, I feel like I've done, I've done a lot of English and, and, and I feel like, I don't know. That doesn't make you nervous because that's English is also my second language, but I've been doing it so much in English that case. Si regreso a, a español, pues, no. No, 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 man, well, man. maybe that's a thing for actors, but not for writer director, right? Or well, so no. he still has to write the, the, the yeah, script. Yeah, write the dialogue and whatnot. It's, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like I've always been, I can assimilate and respond and quicker in Spanish. Yeah. Like, I, sí, I, ah, I, yo también, igual yo, igual yo. But I just feel like I've been doing it in English so much that que, híjole, va a tener que regresar a no, mi root. I got, I got to ask you this. Your, <laughs> your Spanish feature that you're currently writing, is that something you want international audiences to be, you know, is it something that you definitely want to go for in the Spanish market or you oh, want yeah. it to be in a, yeah, Spanish oh, yeah. market. I'll, That's where you go. I'll, I'll tell you this right now. I'll, I'll, I'll do the exclusive. Exclusive. Hey, exclusive on, on the Towercast podcast, everybody. Exclusive. <laughs> It's going to be called Yuca, as in for Yucateco, and it's about four best friends going to a quinceañera. So it's basically like super bad in like Seattle. Oh, uh, dude. Uh, okay. Detroit. Yes. Uh, what's Detroit. it called? Detroit Rock City? It's, uh, fuck, what's the name of the movie? I can't remember. Detroit Rock City. Yeah, is, is that the name of the movie? Yeah, or? Detroit Rock City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they go to the concert. They go to the Kiss concert. And the, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's, it's kind of like that, but not but you, you know what i mean but just bringing yeah. in all the like exteriors of 
an all Spanish soundtrack from like like Gusana mm. Ciega to Plastilina Morse to yeah. uh, yeah. uh, uh, just just a fucking like time capsule. Not so yeah. Pop. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited, dude. I'm that so sounds pumped. amazing, man. Sounds I gotta heavy, tell you, yeah. that, that sounds fantastic. I'm so pumped. I, and I really, I don't know, like the more I write it, the more I write it, I just get really happy and I feel like. I want to spend a year of my life doing it. Hey, hey man. Hey, happy. you got you got a front. You, know. you got a front that right here in El Paso to shoot in Alejandro. I'm telling you, bro. But, <laughs> but I mean, cause it takes place in Merida, Yucatan. We yeah, to, yeah. Yeah. We have to show like, there's a whole scene where like CDs were like imported. Like get the I'm, B-roll, just get the B-roll up there, man. Come over here and, and we'll get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be efficient for the budget. <laughs> for the budget, right? For the budget. I'm saying, I'm saying. Uh, but soon, but no, no, like, dude, I've been to El Paso several times. I actually, the, um, was it the Chihuahua Film Festival or what was, uh, uh, um, no, no. Uh, it's like the red logo. I, I'm fucking here sorry. in El Paso or in, in Juarez? It's probably the Juarez. 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 Yeah. Juarez. Oh, Juarez. 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 Film Festival, yeah. yeah. Chihuahua Film Festival. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Super supportive. I don't... I actually really liked El Paso. Like, I had yeah. a really good time, dude. Like, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. If, uh, I would, if, Jesus, I really wish that um, the pandemic wasn't existing, right? So, right. God, I miss film. It's sets. draining yeah. all of us. Tell, us. tell us about it, man. The, the, the only thing kind of keeping us afloat a little bit is this podcast, man, because we get to just talk to filmmakers about what they're working on. I mean, the beauty of it is at the end of the day, you and I were talking about this earlier on the phone, Alejandro. You're you're in Laredo because you're writing. You just decided yeah. to kind of close yourself off for, for some time. Really? And, and, and write. That's why you're in Laredo. <laughs> it's amazing. It's, I, I just, that reminds me. The bass doesn't get here. That reminds me of Johnny Depp in Secret Window. Like, I got to get out. I got to write this book. <laughs> yeah, you know? much. He's going to start hallucinating. <laughs> By the way, before I forget, I also caught the Kevin Smith reference in Monday. I'm just pointing that out. The, 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 the RVT video or the video store, though. Oh, we thought of that in 1995, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's because I had a video store called Quick Stop. <laughs> oh, oh, no okay. way. Oh. Well, I there you go. For Mexico, and the whole logo was the same. The same. Quick Stop video. RST oh, video that's awesome. That said, hey, man, hey, the that's uh, awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> by, I, by the way, an, another nice guy to me, dude. I got to thanks. meet Kevin Smith last year and talk to him, and and he's awesome, dude. He's, he's the sweetest guy in the world. He, he he even signed my Funko Pop of his that I had, man. He's I got to go to a Batman Beyond episode, uh, the Fat Man Beyond episode, his podcast. Oh, nice. Yeah, and nice. we were in LA, and and uh, and yeah, man, he's the nicest guy in the world. Another another one of my heroes. That he's he's. Oh, I haven't had the pleasure because he's also one of the like it was it was just all that 90s like independent filmmaker yeah. Yeah. to kind of like push myself to examine film. And yeah. then and then it was the masters or just whatever. Course, because my parents are are, are, are are pretty big film buffs, not as not oh. to the degree where like 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 us, but right. they would watch a movie sure. every day, especially back then. So I. I the, the the day of the jackal or sneakers like that was because of my dad like my dad was like oh check out this thriller yeah oh. yeah, yeah yeah so no, I mean yeah. that's definitely the where it's at man I I kind of I'm more on the I literally grew up on Spy Kids no bullshit like I literally grew up on Spy the first Spy Kids and and that route you know and, and you, Desperado Desperado my dad fucking loved Desperado man once I upon like, a time in Mexico <laughs> I but um, TV, man. <laughs> but you, look man I I want to get into the last thing which is uh, Tia Juana man I I know we, you know I asked you if we could talk about that that's your latest thing at least on IMDb um, how how much of liberty are you are you at to talk about that Tia Juana. Remember, no, eh? great, tower man. exclusive, they, tower exclusive. Yeah, no, yeah. They, <laughs> well, no, we. I, I got hired to to direct a, a a feature called Tia Juana, which is, uh, it's a comedy. It's like a dramedy, and it's dramedy. the best I can say. It's kind of like Mrs. Doubtfire meets Eastbound and Down. Oh, uh, it's it's not. Ooh. Is it? Is it? It's not because I was reading up on it a little bit. Is ooh. is it? Is it a remake? <laughs> Is it a remake from the 1940s, 50s one, or is it its own thing? No, it's its own thing. It's its own thing. Okay, cool, gotcha. Man. Gotcha. Yeah. We, it's it's very, it's like, it's to highlight Hispanic heritage, sure. and to I don't know, man. Like I really, it has a it has a heart because the first thing I was like, uh, I don't want to do a movie like this, and then you start reading it, and it's like it's got so much heart, man. That. Yeah. And not only that, but like the production company, uh, Mucho Mas Media and Corazon Films have been ridiculously supportive. Ridiculously supportive. Like, when are you guys waiting for 
um, for the pandemic to end and start shooting? Or when does that shoot? When is that? That's, a? It was, well, it was supposed to be like, we were supposed to start shooting in October, but because with the pandemic, sure. we had to raise a little bit more funds and there's just <clears throat> the, the, where we're going to shoot it. So while that's getting developed, like my, my strategy during the pandemic to not lose my shit was just be, be just right. Yeah. So yeah. I've, yeah. Had yeah. To, I've had to, I wrote like two short films, two features, like just writing. Yes. Yeah, dude. That's, yeah. that's where I'm at right now, Alejandro. Like I I'm freaking out because this is the I'm year where I have to film. I'm telling these guys, dude, like they're even like my producer, Austin, like my wife even was like, Hey, you just finished writing. I just finished writing a musical feature, which I'm something I'm extremely excited about, and it's that Mexican American vibe. Film well. fix, awesome. dude. I need, I need and it, uh, I need yeah, it. and 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 I'm very excited about that one. But um, I finished writing that one, and then I did. I wrote one. I don't know, 45 pager up for a horror anthology that we're doing. I wrote two shorts on top of that. And I'm currently writing my second feature of the year. Nerds. <laughs> so so Nerds. I'm, I'm on the same boat, man. It's you. We gotta, man. We gotta. We can't like, like we gotta. Yes, yeah, man. Keep yourself sane, man. Really from, waste, man. Going a little cuckoo for cocoa yeah. puffs, you know. And the Lao, man, the Lao too. I know he can't talk about it just yet, but the two features that he's working on in the short, dude, are fucking awesome too. Which I'm excited to see what that turns into, also. That's fucking uh, awesome, it, it, guys. Like that that's great coming. because it's it's the more you keep busy. I mean. This has been really very weird. Yeah, strange but times. I, I feel like if you if you really concentrate on like the surroundings, like the uh, elements of like you know, kind of like bonding with more family and like yeah, kind of slowing down. Like I feel like it was. It, we it, needed it, this too. It, we needed it. it kind of like yeah. breaks or some shit. Like yeah, it was really, yeah, we needed it, man. Yeah, I've been, right. I've been thinking about that too. And sort of in some weird way, it kind of like happened for a reason. Kind of. Yeah, we needed it, man. We needed the world. The world needed it, to like not only like on the, almost like on a on the supernatural level, the world needed to just fucking chill. For in a, a weird way, yeah. huh? Yeah, I've had that too in the back of my head too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because. I think we were all too pre. I mean, well, that's the thing. It's like it's also in the states. Like the states always has that that uh, hustler culture that needs. That's my you know, my bro- my brother made this joke, man. I don't know if you know, but El Paso's in very bad shape right now, uh, Alejandro. I don't know if you've I heard. I think the Paso. country is, my man. Yeah, yeah, man, yeah no, no, but fighting. yeah, but we're fighting. But my brother made this joke, man. Like everything's bigger in Texas, <laughs> and what happened in in Europe and 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 in Africa and all the other countries. We amplified it. The U.S. decided to make it even fucking bigger, and we're just doing really bad right now, man. We're struggling. Uh, it doesn't. But, it doesn't help that there's people that just don't fucking put their part. Dude, because, like, yeah. if if people like if 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 people are, are are worried about making this like a political statement with the mask and shit, that's, it's like look, that's the dumbest thing. That's what sucks, man. Because they need to realize that we're in November, and it's literally because of them. Yeah. Yeah. Because you I heard have- it here on the Towercast podcast from filmmaker Alejandro Montoya Marin. <laughs> Wear your fucking masks, people, please. Like, sucios I, cabrones. I haven't been to a restaurant. I went to, no, I went to a patio for a meeting. Yeah. <sighs> Sad, dude. Too, like, it's yeah. Just- I'm dying to go to a bar. I'm dying to go to a concert. I'm dying yeah. to throw you yeah. trans- like, trans- We need it, man. We need it. But even even as creatives, man, like that's what fuels our stories is is life experience. We need yeah. the life experience. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, but what uh, if we kill ourselves before we shoot it, man? That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. <laughs> no, but uh, Alejandro, seriously, man, we got to have you down in El Paso, or we got to shoot up to Albuquerque to shoot something with you, man. I've been telling you this. And, we'll meet uh, halfway, dog. I don't know. That's a state line, dude. <laughs> yeah. Gallup? <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. Hey. I don't know. I know that's not even no. Gallup is the other way. Gallup's yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, gotta... no, man. Like it's this was a fun this was a fun this was a fun episode and I and I really appreciate you guys uh inviting me and chatting with you guys honestly. Yeah, brother. And all likewise. Is there is there any other um anything you'd like to plug before we move on to our last segment? Um, no man, uh, just follow me on Alejandro Montoya Marin on, on on Instagram, and I update everything. So the comic yeah. book is coming. I'm dropping a short film uh, tomorrow. Nice. Oh, uh, yeah, super quick, and it's that's a quick. Tarantino. What's the, what's the name of that short film? It's called Get It, Get It, Get It, Get It, Get It, Get It. Get yeah, it. I had I had a couple of hours to shoot after one of the worst experiences I've had on set. Well, I, uh, I walked no. out of a project, and I was like, like this can't be. 
how life is going to be. And then it's uh, and one then of those. Immediately I did a short film. I was like, Oh yeah, no, it's, it isn't. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> just a, just a, a palate cleanser, so to speak. <laughs> totally. I dude, I was so nervous until the last shot. And I was like, Oh, okay. Cool. We, okay. we got to get into our last segment before we, before you, I know you got to take off Alejandro, but our last segment. Oh, well, before uh, we close the episode, we like to put the guest on the hot seat with the Laos question. Uh, word of the day. Word of the day. So, okay. in, in case you don't know or you, you haven't heard the show, uh, we like a word of the day segment, you know, just to expand our minds as communicators, script writers, creatives. Um, I heard that a little so bit. You know. I, I like to give people just a word of the day. Like, I mean, honestly, I, I don't know why. We just do it. But yeah, to just get past his, his color of hair, dude. Just get, get past it. <laughs> yeah, just, just don't ignore this. Uh, so, Alejandro. Yes. Oh, man, your, your word of the day is agonist. Do you oh. know what agonist means? Agonist. Like a... Like a I, I think I know this one. I think I know. It's Is it like um, like an antagonist? That's what I was going not, with. Not <laughs> saying, really. And I mean, not like, really. you can't but, but it's, right? English is my second. I, I can... <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, give us a Spanish one, cabrón. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, man. No, I do not know what that is, but all I mean, right. agonist. Agonist is something that we've probably all written into our stories, whether we know. I know, it or not. I know it's, it's, it, <laughs> it's somebody who's torn by inner conflict, and um, I, I wanted to bring up the word because I've heard of well, that. for for one, we we put it in all of our stories. Every every plot that has that person who is torn inside and in is character. trying to break out. Yeah, it's it's a character. It's that drive. But I mean, just like we're writing agonist, we're also kind of all agonist ourselves in the way that we use our inner struggle maybe inner challenges to try to get to that next level right now this whole experience of you know zooming and uh trying to make the best of a pandemic it's that struggle right now but i mean it's, it's just gonna get better after here we're excited to see what you do next we're excited to see what filmmakers yes. do next and yeah we're, we're gonna get past it but uh using this as a drive instead of an obstacle you know so agonist word of the day there you Ag go Beautiful word, Delo. Beautiful word. Today on the Towercast podcast, we've had the amazing Alejandro Montoya Marin, um, fantastic filmmaker. He's you're gonna see his name in lights really soon, man. Yes. He's, he's, if you haven't already, if you haven't already, yeah, he's he's gonna do so much, um, and he's already doing it. I I shouldn't say he's gonna. He's already doing so much. And go check out his it. website. Uh, Alejandro Montoya and uh, follow him on Instagram, uh, the same name, and you're going to be able to see all of his awesome content that he's he's putting out there, man. He's he's a great storyteller. We were so lucky to have him on the podcast today. Uh, and no, thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. thank you for thank you, thank you, man. Thank you for that friendship, man. It's it's nice to know that we could always bounce ideas and we could always and we're reciprocal, man. Let's do something. I I I once all this all this all this shit is is done. Yeah. I yeah. would love to submit something to the. El Paso Film Festival. Yeah, yeah. You guys told me a night in the town, man. I oh yeah, man, know, sure. man. You're the whole weekend, bro. Man. We got you. We just we just had um Carlos Corral, man. He's a good friend of ours. He's the guy in charge of the El Paso Film Festival, man. So oh nice. That's yeah, so great. yeah, man. Once you have your Zen, we'll we'll relay it to him that you're coming to town, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll make a night out of it, brother. We'll make a night oh, out of it. Be amazing, dude. Like it'd be, yeah. it'd be great to just like well once I mean. The way it sounds like this isn't gonna happen till like fucking summer to maybe the same around the same time this year. Yeah. But for whatever reason it's sooner. Like, hey, think about it. If it's sooner, great. If it isn't, it just gives us more time so to build up yep. to moment. So then the night's gonna be definitely. Up. That's, that's the way we're looking at it too, man. At the end of the day, that's, a, that's the way we're looking. We're yeah, yeah. pre-production is smart is man probably, over here. Yeah, it's probably one of the most the. the most pivotal step in getting your film going man and and, and we, that's the way we're looking at it too um but when when you do man just know you got your crew out here with tower productions man and and we'll thank be in contact for sure brother but thank you so much um thank you for tuning into the tower cast podcast if you're listening keep making your films man keep writing your scripts we love what you guys are doing man we want to talk to you filmmakers uh shoot us a message man on our website or on our facebook instagram you can reach us let us know uh what what you'd like to hear more of on this podcast man if you want to have more guests like the amazing alejandro montoya marine man you know Guys, let me cut you off, motherfucker. How <laughs> about this? How about you cut it? We're done with the episode, and then how about we all get a drink and we chat for like thirty minutes, just film, dude. I'm with Let's it. do it, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. You heard it. You heard it here. Now you know what we're doing after this podcast, man. There you go. I mean, unless we do an extended episode, but it's not gonna be. It's just gonna be us 
jab. Shit in the shit. Shit in yeah. the shit. Yeah, saying dick jokes and shit. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, you heard it here on the Tower Cast podcast. Thank you so much again, Alejandro, for being on, man. We'll catch you guys soon. Stay safe out there. Love you guys.